So the reason why we decided to come here to Mexico in Cozumel, uh, I think was mainly because of the timing was good and also the condition was nice. So I think it's a very specific course to prepare for sub seven as well, even though I will have pacers that will help me around, especially on the bike. So it's kind of giving us the answers that we're looking for. Of course, at this time of the year, it's limited possibilities, but Cozumel was one of the races where we saw people had been doing fast times before, despite being a little bit longer uh, bike course than normal. So Cozumel, it was. So it's, uh, it's been amazing coming here. I came here two weeks early and already was a lot of athletes around uh, cheering on and kind of giving their support and it's been really uh, feeling welcomed and uh, it's amazing to see how many that actually saw the race in Tokyo and kind of uh, gets inspired by that and uh, yeah it's, it's uh, strange but it's also very nice to see. <laughs> 2,320 meters of training in Sierra Nevada really doesn't allow for very aggressive uh, or a lot of heat training. We had to start it easy there, but we knew we had to get to Cozumel uh, with enough time in advance. And from all the testing we have done into the Olympics and so on, we, we knew that Christian needed approximately minimum seven days, probably 10 days to be on the safe side. And here we had, uh, with two weeks, we know that we, have, uh, we should have enough time to prepare also for the heat that we eventually will face. Yes, now we are so lucky that we can get the chance to use the boat to have a look at the swim course. So we're swimming to the, as it's an ATP swim, it's almost 4K from start to finish. So we'll now drive to the beginning of the, the start and then jump out of the boat. So the course itself here in uh, Cozumel is maybe the smoothest swim you can have. If the current is normal, we knew that already before, like la last time that's where I'm at, like around 39, 40 minutes. So now the hassle of understanding all the codes of the bags is always kind of as confusing as always. So uh, we were so close to miss the T1 and T2 check-in, but I was <laughs> stressing quite a lot when we were putting on like up there on the balcony and putting on the, the new chain ceramic speed for the race. It was like one hour left until both T1 and T2 was closing. So, um, but uh, yeah, we, we saw like Rudy Wilder, he's the, most experienced one, and if, if he's coming in five minutes before it closes, it's probably the right thing to do. One of the things that actually caught us a little bit on surprise when we arrived at Cosmel is that we knew already that the wind conditions could be challenging, meaning that the, how to say, the downwind part would be in a protected area where we wouldn't get any advantage from the tailwind. While getting into the section where we would have headwind, we would be completely exposed to the wind or mostly exposed to the wind. What we maybe caught us with a bigger surprise is actually the rain. The rain, we, we've had much more rain than what has been usual for any years before. Um, both as a feedback from other athletes has been here, but also the local. And it's actually been to the extent where uh, roads have completely filled up with water. We have had water 10, 15 centimeters high. The water has been brown, so you can't see potholes, you can't see debris or anything that is in, uh, in the roads, which really can make it dangerous unless you, how to say, you slow down and you get up on a bike and you lose, you lose vital time uh, in the race, especially when you aim for a record. Day, big day is here. It's looking like he's going to be pissing down at least for the first part of the race. It's uh, yeah, quite a lot of rain outside. So 
I think there are no doubt we will have rain. It is rain already. Beautiful. Not fast. Beautiful. Lovely. You can't do anything about the weather. The weather is what the weather is. But of course, Christian, I'll say, mentally preparing for how to say, getting into the water, what to do, what to focus on, just finding the, the flow. Of course, I have the time to continuously run through my head what's, what, what is this gonna look like. And the race morning and just kind of trying to stay to my numbers, uh, I found like it's no reason to, or I don't gain too much by going to the front and swimming in first position, like uh, for maybe gaining like another minute. So I was more staying second second position in the field, in the group, and just trying to concern energy and uh, saving my legs, using my arms mainly, and uh, getting as smoothly through the swim as possible before. Getting into transition. Because I felt like the numbers were reading so high compared to how I was feeling. But then uh, I was thinking maybe there was something wrong with the calibration. But uh, I guess it <laughs> was just that I was high on caffeine and feeling fresh and good, and uh, the numbers were just coming uh, naturally. So Pushing maybe the first, I didn't make most of the work, like the first hour, uh, but felt it was like a long train behind me. So, as it's a new territory, I don't know really how strong the others are on the bike. So I was kind of thinking, okay, is it that easy to just stay behind that everyone is kind of, and maybe I have to kind of share the work a little bit. But as we came through downtown and Patrick went to the front and managed to build up a little gap and I was sitting third position and I saw that uh, he was able to kind of slip away. So then just as we kind of passed one loop mark, I was then just putting in a little surge, bridging up and I look, have, had a look back and I saw that uh, the guys behind wasn't able to follow. So I saw we had a little gap there after about 60K and I thought, okay, now it's time to put the hammer down. They say actually now that the estimated finish time for the bike is four, zero. So if he does that, he is, he is gonna take Jan's record. The problem is that when you go this fast, people, the first thing you see on the forums is, is this doping allegations because people think that the, the Ironman people are the holy people of tri triathlon. And, and the problem is that they don't understand that there's a new era coming on board now. And that's, I think, but I think as soon as people start to realize, it will only be a matter of time, of course, where people try to bridge the gap and they will also start to go faster. But uh, I think they need to understand that there is, there is, there is a league above, above up the pros in Ironman today. And that, um, that is the Norwegian triathletes. So I knew that I was then look, doing the math and kind of thinking, okay, what if I do 245, run 240 or 235? Like, uh, so I kind of had a good overview of what I needed to do to be able to go sub 730 or 740 or even 25. Um, but I also felt like my stomach wasn't uh, the best, like uh, from the morning, it was quite kind of, it's easier on the bike because then you just sit sitting on the saddle. And then when I started running, it was kind of a little bit funny stomach again. And it was more kind of trying to keep control, doing the uh, nutrition right. Wasn't sure, like, but, but I thought, okay, I, I can do a quick toilet stop there on the first lap. And after that, I was just feeling so, so good again. Like, it was, uh, it, it was like, uh, yeah, I had like new legs, new body, and uh, coming into downtown, a lot of people screaming, cheering on. 
and I was just getting so excited, like <laughs> trying to push it down to like 335 pace. And uh, oh, okay, this is uh, this is smooth. This is smooth. This this can go really fast. Uh, if he keeps this, is this he's already at a, he already at a 230 marathon now, but it's 14k. Is one one out of three laps. This is uh, yeah. Uh, it, when I see he passes the 30 30k mark, if he's still keeping it up, I think he will he, he will he will bring it home. What about the 30k wall? Oh yeah, the 30k wall. I knew. I was actually thinking about there when I went out on the last lap. I was just trying to go like it's better to go five. 10 seconds lower than ending up having to walk. And it's kind of when you start kind of running almost in the same pace as uh, the age groupers around, like often on the first lap, you're just kind of flying past. But then the further, the closer you get to the finish line, the often it's more like you're running the same speed. So, so it was uh, very tough to start overtaking the people in front of me. From 10 to 5K left was maybe the toughest part. All the work that we have done, all the preparations, all the details, it pays off. The amount of hours we put into just all the preparations uh, to, to just be the best, have all the margins on our side and be able to come home again and basically tell my family and others that this is actually more their victory than ours because they put in a sacrifice that is uh, quite tremendous also compared to also what we are doing. Well, I guess uh, Alistair is <laughs> was enjoying the live coverage. <laughs> oh, yeah, it wasn't any live coverage, but uh, uh, he would probably be doing all he, all that he can do to be as well prepared for uh, next summer. So uh, uh, he is probably doing yeah, everything he can with his team, and uh, we have a team that is quite motivated to not just beat him, but beat his team as well. So. <laughs> It's going to be uh, a really fun journey to work towards and uh, probably he didn't expect me to hold on that well in the humidity underneath, I guess. <laughs> 